Hey guys, Pokedown here. There are many Pokemon native to the Alola region that we would expect. Pokemon like Wingle, Tentacool, and Magmar, and that's just to name a few. But then there are also Pokemon that you would expect to be included in the Sun and Moon games that aren't. And in this video, I'm going to be counting down the top 5 Pokemon that I think should be native in the Alola region. But wait, I'm not alone. What's up Lumios Trainers? Lumios Trainer Zack here. And today I'm going to be joining Dan in this video. Remember that all the Pokemon that Dan and I mentioned on this list is just down to our opinion, so be sure to let us know what you guys think in the comment section. Also, Dan joined me over on my channel to count down the top 10 Pokemon not native to their own region, so once you're done here, be sure to check that out. But anyway, with all that said, let's get started. Coming in at the number 5 spot on this list today, we have Dealing and Salzburg. Dealing and Sourcebuck are two Pokemon that we think belong in the Sun and Moon Pokedex. As we all know, the Alola region is based on a real world location called Hawaii. Hawaii, like Alola, is made up of a number of islands, and there's this one island in Hawaii known as Lanai, which is home to a large population of deer. Because of this, we were amazed to find out that there aren't actually any deer Pokemon in the Alola region. So this is why we think that Dealing and Sourcebuck should be native in the Sun and Moon games. We could have easily said another deer Pokemon like Stan but we also think that the designs of Dealing and Sourceback also fit the style of Alola. Like Unova did by adding more Pokemon into the games in their sequels, we would love to see these Pokemon added to the Alola decks in the future Sun and Moon follow-up game. Whether this is Pokemon Stars or Pokemon Sun 2 and Moon 2, we don't mind because to see more Pokemon like these added to the games would be awesome. Number 4 is Mantike and Mantine. It's weird that they weren't found in Alola considering Hawaii has lots of manta rays in real life. Just look at these majestic creatures. Dan, you better be showing them pictures. Don't you agree that Mantike and Mantine would fit perfectly in the colorful and tropical region of Alola? One cool thing that Hawaii has is the fact that they have manta ray dives. It's basically where you put on a bunch of diving gear and get to hang out with manta rays underwater. Imagine if we could do that in Sun and Moon. It would have been so cool if this was possible in the Hano Ground Resort and you were able to chill with some underwater Mantine. They could have even been ride Pokemon for diving. Wow, I just thought of that. At the very least, we should have been able to see them with the Poke Finder. But yeah, we feel like not adding the Mantine line was a huge missed opportunity, seeing as how their real life counterparts are swimming all around Hawaii. Coming in at the number 3 spot on this list today, we have Clampool and its evolutions. When first looking at the Alola Pokedex, we were very surprised to see that this evolution line was not included in it. Firstly, we believe that because in some places in Hawaii people hunt for pearls, Clam Pearl pretty much deserves to be in Alola. It would be kinda cool also to see Clam Pearl being a rare fishing encounter, especially because we imagine the pearls can't be the easiest thing to find. Let's also look at Clam Pearl's evolutions. Firstly, Gorbis is the Pokemon described to look similar to a dolphin. And yes, we know that that's not what it's based on, but a lot of people do say it resembles a dolphin. According to Leaks, this region we were meant to be getting a dolphin Pokemon and once again we know that Tapu Fini resembles a dolphin but it's actually based on a swordfish. So we see no harm in Gorbis being native to the Alola region. Also Gorbis' design, like a lot of other water type Pokemon, looks pretty tropical so we think that it would be the perfect fit with this region's whole look. This can also be said for Huntail and also Huntail is based on an eel which is an animal also native to Hawaii. So because of this, we think Huntail should also have a slot in the Alola Pokedex. This whole evolution line has a very Alola feel to it, and we really think that they should be native in the Sun and Moon games. Taking the number 2 spot is Solrock and Lunatone. Okay, do I even have to explain? I'm pretty sure that everyone and their moms thought that Solrock and Lunatone would be in Sun and Moon. I even mentioned it in multiple videos I made. Totally not a shameless plug by the way. How could we not think this? I mean it's so obvious. Now imagine how we felt to find out they weren't in the games. It was kind of annoying. Plus it doesn't help that in the final episode of the XYZ anime, Team Rocket teased the Lola by dropping Soul Rock and Lunatone keychains. We could have had Soul Rock exclusive to Sun and Lunatone exclusive to Moon. Or Game Freak could have been real cheeky and have Lunatone exclusive to Sun and Soul Rock exclusive to Moon. 
That would have been funny, but I digress. You might argue that they wouldn't fit in Alola, but a perfect place to find them could have been Mount Hokulani. There you can find all kinds of space-related Pokemon like Minior, Cleffa, and Beldum. So Solrock and Lunatone could have easily been put there. Just another huge missed opportunity by Game Freak. But it's fine. I'm over it. I swear. Coming in at the number one spot on this list is yet another tropical Pokemon, this time being Tropius. Tropius was a Pokemon revealed in the third gen games, and although we think it's right at home in the Hoenn region, we also believe it would thrive in the Alola region too. I mean, just look at this Pokemon, it has a very tropical feel to it, and that's mainly down to its design. Tropius is a flying type, so of course it has wings, but its wings are very similar to the leaves found on palm trees. And since palm trees are generally found in places that have a warmer climate, Tropius would be right at home in Alola. Also, growing from Tropius' neck, are bananas, and like palm trees generally being found in warmer climates, this is the same for banana plants. And also, for those of you who didn't know, Tropius' design is actually partially inspired from banana plants. So if banana plants are found in hot places, someone needs to get this Pokemon to Alola now. Also, Tropius is partially based on a sauropod, which is a herbivorous dinosaur. And since there were no fossil Pokemon in Sun and Moon, maybe Tropius could have been one. Maybe coming in the form of something like the palm fossil. This may be quite the stretch, but nevertheless, we believe that Tropius should be native in the Alola region. But anyway, that's all we have time for in this video, so if you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Also, once again, huge thanks to Lumio's trainer Zach for joining me in this video. Be sure to subscribe to his channel. We also made a video over on my channel, counting down the top 10 Pokemon not native to their own region. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to check it out. And also, if you agree or disagree with anything we said in this video, be sure to let us know in the comments. We'd really be interested to know. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, but for now, I've been Pokedan, you've been amazing, and I'll see you guys next time.